In this video, I'll be sharing with you all seven tips that will help you with fingering, speed, and control at the piano. All clips are taken directly from my Instagram. If you're not following me there already, I invite you to do so. Here's some ways to play a glissando at the piano. Using the back of fingers four, three, two. Using the side of finger two. Just playing them with your fingers using the top of your thumb, using the tips of your fingers. Combination with your thumb and fingers. Back of your pinky. So I promise you this is the fastest fingering for a chromatic scale. What we're going to do is take E to E and we're going to divide that up into three different parts. First part, one, two, three, second, one, two, three, four, and third, one, two, three, four, five, and back to one. And at the end there, I just did five, five, because why not? Here's some quick advice for playing chords and making sure all the notes sound at the same time rather than being staggered. One way to practice it might be to depress down the keys, maintain this exact position without moving anything, and then lift the entire hand up. Again, don't change a thing, and then depress the keys again. This isn't perfect, you'll probably move around a little bit, but it gives you an idea of the type of position you're going for. Another way is to simply stack. So start with one note, then two, then three, making sure you're always getting all of the notes at the same time, and then just adding one note at a time. An additional tip, make sure that you put attention to the tips of your fingers so that you're not sloppy in terms of how you're positioning them. You can have flat or curved fingers, but don't have this sort of thing, which I see a lot. Sometimes I do it as well, but you have less control sometimes. When we're playing fast scales like this, I think it's really about micro adjustments at the fingertips and also at the wrist level. Fingertips, it's rather straightforward. If you're a little sloppy, you're going to be uneven when you're pressing down the note. But with the wrist, there are tiny adjustments up and down and sideways that happen to accommodate what note is being played next, especially white to black keys. For example, here, I'm slightly moving up and also here. Of course, it's not as apparent when it's fast, but it's a tiny, tiny, tiny adjustment. Just to get a feel for it, try exaggerating the other way. Try playing the scale with the fixed wrist position high, see how hard that is, and try it, you know, even in the middle or lower. It's really awkward. So in order to play chromatic double thirds with ease, think of it in two parts. The first part is one and two. Be mindful of E to F. That is the most difficult part. And think of a very small hop. You don't need to be pressing up and down or do any kind of inefficient motion. Just keep it loose and then be mindful of the top. The chromatic scale with three, four, and five. And when you combine it together, it should look something like that. And it should not be tense at all. Especially from here to here. Hope that helps. Right hand thumb. Right hand index finger. Third finger. Fifth. Left hand thumb. Index, third, pinky. So as you can see, this is rather difficult for me still and I've been working on it. Something that has helped me quite a bit is to practice it in a way where I'm singling out those notes separately. Maybe on every other offbeat, like that. 
and I'm basically training myself to become familiar with the touch required for a soft dynamic versus a louder one in close proximity. So eventually, I can just play it all together. So trills, something like this with four notes, a great way to practice it is to keep it in tempo first of all and try skipping notes. So of these four notes, let's first skip the first note, so only the last three. Try skipping the second note, the third note, and the fourth note. Now try playing it all together and that should help.